Hi, uh, this is Kristen Tripp from Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. I run the Cuba Trips and Cuba program at Yellow Dog. And we wanted to provide you with essentially a visual version of our packing list. Flies, take one. All right, so we're going to review some of the fly selections that I recommend for fishing in Cuba. And we're going to start with bonefish flies. I've just got a small selection of flies here, um, a variety of different patterns. And, and honestly, that's the best approach to take. You want to have some Christmas Island specials, a variety of white tans. Um, but most importantly, a variety of weight classes. I like to make sure that I've got very uh, lightweight with either bead chain eyes or no eyes to be able to access bonefish in super skinny water. And then um, some midweight flies with bead chain eyes and then some heavier flies to be able to drop down into deeper water depending upon where the bonefish are and what water depth you're fishing in. But I also recommend always buying two of each fly. Uh, inevitably, if you only have one fly, you're gonna end up having that one fly get taken by a bonefish and, and not having a replacement. So really, you know, half dozen to a dozen is ideal and um, variety of weight classes and a variety of colors, but the bonefish in Cuba are really pretty easy to feed. So um, just making sure you've got something that looks presentable and your delivery is good, we'll probably get that bonefish to put that fly in its mouth. All right, so when fishing for permit in Cuba, the ever elusive permit, which don't worry, just like permit anywhere else in the world, the Cuban permit are picky and don't eat flies half the time. Um, but to hedge your bets and the way that I prepare for the off chance that they may be interested in one of the flies that you choose, I like to um, basically select a, a wide variety of both shrimp and crab patterns. Um, squimps by Doug McKnight are one of my favorite, uh, favorite permit flies, um, resembling shrimp. You know, you want to have, again, like the bonefish flies, you want to have a variety of different weight classes, um, so that you can get into, uh, any depth of water relatively quickly. Um, so, you know, heavyweight, midweight, lightweight, and a variety of different sizes. You know, I've got crab patterns here that are mid-range. I've got some that are smaller, which, um, you know, is a good idea. And then indeed some that are bigger and true crab patterns. So contraband uh, crabs, El flexos are really popular. The other aspect of picking a selection of permit flies is knowing the bottom and knowing the destination that you're going and what colors you're gonna see on the bottom. So for example, if you're going to Cayo Romano, Cayo Cruz off the Northern coast, you're gonna be looking for more of these white or sand color patterns. Um, and if you were going to a place like Zapata off the Southern coast of Cuba that has more turtle grass and tannic water, you're gonna be looking for more olive or green or even brown. So a variety of patterns, you know, I'd say six to a dozen. And again, when fishing for Cuban permit, you want two of whatever magic money fly you have uh, that ends up working. You wanna make sure you've got a spare just in case uh, you lose one and lose that special fish. All right, when fishing for tarpon in Cuba, um, there's some great colors that you definitely wanna make sure to have in your box um, and some patterns that really are go-tos that, that you should definitely consider. Um, tarpon flies, obviously, they're the most colorful, they're really fun, they're easy to tie, so tying your own patterns is certainly recommended. But I would highly recommend that you make sure you've got black and purple flies. Tar these are tarpon toads. Um, you know, orange is a great, orange or root beer colored is a great addition um, and can be very popular in Cuba during certain times of years, certain times of the year. Um, chartreuse, and you know, you can see here we've got two different sizes. Um, and two different profiles. So when you look at different size tarpon flies, what you wanna look at is the profile of a particular fly. This one is gonna have a bigger profile imitating a larger bait fish than this one, which would emulate a much smaller size bait fish. Um, but chartreuse, root beer, black and purple, and certainly some black and red flies would be recommended. These are tarpon bunnies, one of my favorite patterns for Cuba and really fun to be able to tie fairly easy. Um, the biggest thing that I 
tell anglers who come to Cuba is make sure that you've got a quality hook. We, um, we are very particular about who, uh, which flies we sell. You know, if you go to a generic store and you pick up a bunch of tarpon flies in the discount section, there's a really good chance that that hook is going to break. Um, so really important to be uh, making sure that you've got quality hooks on your flies. Um, we love the EP flies. You know, any of these bait fish patterns are really critical um, flies to have. And again, these are really lightweight, so easy to cast. Um, and they have a great profile. Everything from these smaller bait fish patterns in very generic colors to some of these bigger bait fish patterns. I mean, this is a EP black and purple or black and red. These, these are must haves in your fly box when you go to Cuba. Um, you know, and, and some of these have rattles in them, which give a little noise, get a little of attention. Um, those are great. There's no reason not to have some of those. And you can see that I've got both large profile flies and these littler ones. You're going to want to have a selection of both. For most of my trips to Cuba or most anglers who are going to Cuba, I recommend, you know, about a dozen tarpon flies. Um, some of these generic uh, deceiver, deceiver patterns, you know, in, in greens or in blues looking like standard bait fish out there, they're great as well. Um, and yeah, have fun with it, you know, bait, make sure as always to have two of, of every selection and, um, have fun with filling your, your box with some diverse colors and some, some diverse sizes. So when fishing in Cuba, I always recommend that people also be prepared for fun species like barracuda. Um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to be able to really test out some other other flies that you may not otherwise specifically purchase for a trip. So these are uh, needlefish flies that are uh, great for cuda and um, it's important to have at least two in every box. Either one of these will work, um, but the first cuda that you cast to is going to absolutely destroy your fly. So if you really love cudas, um, there's plenty of big cuda in uh, Cuba. Be sure to bring, um, you know, two, four, of these cuda flies um they they really work well i also love to um love to include some poppers um if you end up with the right conditions um sometimes you can present these poppers to cuda which is hilarious to watch the eat but um if if you have a whole bunch of baby tarpon as well and you've already caught a bunch on these little tiny flies it can be really really just a great day to bring some of these poppers and and um strip poppers in order to, to instigate the tarpon bite. It's really fun. Um, this is a gummy minnow and I'm on the fence as to whether or not this qualifies as a fly, but these are also worth having in your, in your box. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you have off conditions, um, or the weather's poor, it's a good idea to be able to have some of these bait fish patterns where you can go fish deeper water and bluer holes where generic basic bait fish will do the trick. So again, have some fun with your fly selections for Cuban uh, species that are a little bit on the fringe like kudas and be sure to bring some poppers and some kuda flies and um, hopefully the opportunity presents itself to be able to utilize them and, and have some really great moments in, uh, in hooking up with some fish. Choosing boxes um, for a trip um, there's a lot of different options, obviously, and one of the things to consider is um, the fact that, you know, you, you're, you don't want to fill up your bag with a whole bunch of boxes. So you want to you have a box that um, is probably waterproof, such as this one, or potentially one of these Umqua boxes that's waterproof. Um, if you are the type of person who ends up with your, your fly box out in the boat, and you've got conditions where salt water is in the boat, which oftentimes happens, and this ends up floating around a little bit, then you don't ruin all your flies. You don't have to wash all your flies upon return by default of having salt water get into the box. Um, you know, these, these cliff boxes are another great option. This is not a waterproof box, but it has foam throughout, which allows you to be able to basically, you know, sort and arrange quickly and easily um, your entire fly selection in one box. Um, I oftentimes when I'm preparing for a trip, I'll come to a fly shop and buy some new flies and you'll, you'll have this 
little box and I'm tempted to just throw this in my bag and go with it. But the problem here is you don't want to be out on the skiff, you know, fumbling through all of your flies and the wind comes or a wave comes or you get bumped and boom, your flies are all over the place. Plus it's really hard if you have a, you know, instance where, for example, you're looking for the right permit fly or you're looking to change a permit fly and it's game time and you got to do it in a hurry. Um, you don't want to be digging through this to find the right fly. You want to make sure that they're organized in a nice fly box. Um, if I buy a whole bunch of these new tarpon flies, I will actually keep these in the package and just toss them in the box um, just so they're, they're, they're safe in these. Um, but keep in mind, if you open that up and the wind blows, they may go out of the boat. So it's worthwhile, you know, to to make sure that you actually organize them and take them out um, and put them in a box so that they're organized and easy to access. Um, it's also worth noting that you never want to take a used tarpon fly or used saltwater fly of any kind and put it back in your box. Um, it will oxidize and ruin all the hooks and the next time you go to hook up with a tarpon um, your, your hooks are all going to break. So make, make sure that you keep your used flies um, separate. And actually that's a great use for these little boxes. You can bring that in the, in the boat for the day and when you've used a fly, stick it in the box or a Ziploc bag. And at the end of your trip when you get home you can wash them all and put them back in your main box. But your main box should be all unused flies, never exposed to salt. Um, and sort it in a way so that you can easily access what you're looking for. These little boxes as well, um, they can be really great. I, it, it's all a matter of preference, right? You know, you may have a permit box, you may have a tarpon box, you may just have one box. Um, there's a huge variety of different options, but having a box that offers the option to have waterproofing is a really great idea and one that doesn't have too high a profile and isn't too heavy um for for a trip can be all things that you want to think about so hope that's helpful and um yeah that's the scoop on boxes <laughs>